Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we are starting a new series on Docker and Niagara. With Niagara 4.13, Tritium has added the option to deploy Niagara using Docker and Docker containers. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to explain what Docker is, uh, why we care about it, and in future videos, take a look at how it's deployed and that kind of thing. So in this video, we're just going to be taking a look at what Docker is, and let's get started. So let's get right to the question. What is Docker? Docker is a virtualization platform, um, and it runs on most hardware platforms, so Raspberry Pi, uh, typical server hardware, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, you name it, pretty much anything in the cloud, and any operating system, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, uh, it'll run on all of them. And where it's different from our typical uh, virtual machine virtualization that I think most people are used to seeing is that we're using these things called containers instead of virtual machines. And we'll explain what those are in a little bit, uh, but they have a much lower overhead when you compare them to virtual machines. They're a lot more flexible. You get the ability to script deployments and use uh, features like orchestration, which are very high-end enterprise-y things, uh, but the options are there uh, should you need them and you're, if, if you're doing like a, a super large site or, or something that covers a large geographical area. So what is a container? A uh, container is a sandbox process that's built from an image. We can think of an image as a template, and we can think of a process as an application. If we take a look at the diagrams here on the right, our typical virtual machine deployment looks like this. Uh, we have our infrastructure, so our hardware here at the bottom, and then we have our hypervisor uh, operating system that's living on that hardware. And then from within the hypervisor, we're, we're adding in these virtual machines as we need them. The issue here is that each one of our virtual machines probably has a lot of overlap, especially on this guest operating system side of things. This could be, you know, an, a version of Windows that's on each one of these virtual machines. We're, we're wasting a lot of resources running that version of Windows three times when it's the same version across all three. So Docker looks at that and it tries to fix it. So instead now we have our hardware and we have our guest oper or our host operating system, excuse me. So that could be any operating system like I mentioned before. Then we have our Docker application that's running on here, which allows us then to run these containers with our applications in them. You'll note that there's no guest operating system in these containers. We specifically just have the required uh, pieces of software that each one of these applications needs in order to run. So our next bit about containers is that they're portable. So they're really easy to deploy across anything that Docker is running on. Um, and they're ephemeral, which means that the Docker container itself isn't going to hold our important data because the container itself could be shut down or it could be removed or it could be updated and we don't want to lose that data that's inside. So one of the features is the idea of volumes which lets you link say a folder in your container to a folder that's outside the container and keep that data uh, in the same place so you could update the container very easily. So why do we care about this as an option? Well, first off, we have a large variety of deployment options, as I mentioned before. So this could be cloud, it could be typical server hardware, it could be embedded hardware that goes out at a site. And we can really easily run multiple applications side by side on a single piece of hardware. This isn't something that we're typically used to doing, especially on a site level. Um, if we have different pieces of hardware, we tip, or excuse me, if we have different pieces of software, we typically have to have different pieces of hardware in order to run them. Um, 
But with Docker containers, you can actually run the stuff side by side on a single piece of hardware. So as an example, we've been beta testing uh, a device called a Via Hub, and these Via Hubs run Docker natively. And with that, you have the ability, so on our bench, our hub is running Niagara alongside an MQTT broker and all of the software that's required to bring in uh, LoRaWAN wireless devices. And we're doing all of that from a single piece of hardware. Whereas before, maybe you would have needed a Jace and some kind of small computer that would live in a panel. Um, here we're simplifying things a lot by putting everything on a single piece of hardware. And another really nice um, and another really nice feature is that we have the ability to do fast upgrades and deployments. So because of the ephemeral nature of Docker containers, uh, we can pull down a container or um, actually bring up a new container at a new version and pretty much have no downtime because of that. And then we also get enterpri enterprise class management and orchestration options. Again, this isn't something that I think most people are going to run into, but it's nice to know that those options are there. And as I mentioned earlier, our, low, our overhead is going to be a lot lower because we're not replicating a lot of the resource-intensive bits of uh, operating system that you might be doing in a normal virtual machine environment. So I'm not sure that Docker is going to be something for everyone, but it's nice to know that the option is there. Uh, more flexibility is always better. And in future videos, we're going to explore uh, what deployment actually looks like and what this looks like when using it with Niagara. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check us out at brodyprecision.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.